How you doing, everybody? We're live, baby, live with the big Vito brand. And just as we said, I know we had technical difficulties last week. I know we had some problems last week, but we have the famous, the glamorous, just uh -uh. the amazing Lisa Wilcox. And might I add, extra sexy. Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Doing fine. Did you like my introduction? I know, you know. <laughs> you made me blush. I made you blush. You made me blush. <laughs> Here's the thing: you're you're so glamorous and glowing. You come in yellow when you talk. <laughs> well, another difficulty there, but you have my voice. <laughs> that's that's my fault. I didn't tell Lisa that it was a video, so she's got her audio going, not her video. But it's okay because we're going to ask questions. We're going to ask the questions you you want to know the most. And um, you know, I'm going to let you start off the interview, so I don't talk as much as you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, Lisa, let's talk about, now I just named a bunch of things, all right, and we just talked about that. Let's talk about your looks, okay? Because you know I'm into health and fitness, and I try to keep as, as, as fit as possible. Oh. So before we get into all the questions, I just wanted to get a an insight on somebody like yourself, a female in the business, on how they keep ready and prepared all the time for any break they get. So physical fitness is your question, basically. Physical I diet, skincare. Oh gosh. Well, um, I would have to say I have good genes. Thank you, mom and dad. Okay. Um, and I would say I play tennis. I walk. Um, I'm not a gym goer at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have free weights at home. Um, that's kind of like my basically, you know, and I eat sensibly, but I'm not a vegan or anything. I eat steak and potatoes. I'm a Missouri girl, okay, so I'm totally mis Midwestern food, Southern food. Um, it's just quantity, you know, just don't overdo it, you know. And then skin, again, good genes, you know. I don't do anything special. I've had no work done Thank you. Of course, we have yellow. You're looking at yellow right now, but anyway. <laughs> Amazing um, in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go to my website or go to IMDb or whatever. You can see what I look like. There's all kinds of pictures of me that aren't even in the studio. You know, they're from, you know, at a convention with, you know, supporters and fans and things like that. So I just, you know, got, got, got lucky. Oh, and now we have my phone going. This is a very busy time of year, and I don't even know how to unplug this phone here. Sorry, guys. Well, it's just going to have to – I don't even know how to unplug it. We'll just ignore it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> We're talking about physical fit and physical fitness. <laughs> this is not working. Maybe we should – yeah, this is just not – Vito. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Vito's new to horror movies. He's not, I'm a horror movie fan. He's not a horror movie fan. And I was a big fan of Nightmare on Elm Street because I loved Dream Child when I was a kid. Oh, cool. That was, yeah. That was my movie. I actually watched it with my grandmother who was super, super religious, which makes it even funnier. Because <laughs> we have Amanda, the nun in that one, you know? <laughs> Amanda Kruger. Um, yeah kick some ass in these movies like you're throwing kicks and stuff so did you do any training for that like are you just physically fit like that was crazy well thank yeah they did send me and andras who plays rick my brother you know yeah. uh to karate school for a, a day <laughs> um so i wow so i wouldn't learn how to you know so i wouldn't hit myself in the head with the nunchucks you know and have a concussion um, but I mean, and I had done gymnastics in high school, so, but I had amazing stunt doubles in, in the Nightmare 4, for sure. I mean, we had Olympiads, seriously. So I would do the start of it in the, you know, the cartwheel, let's say, but then cut to stunt double doing flipping over Freddie and, you know, all that crazy stuff. So yeah, then in the nunchuck scene in the bedroom, when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, going to try the nunchucks, because of course I've, I've gained, you know, my brother's powers of karate, you know. So I start it and I do some of it, but from the back, that's totally a, a, a karate stunt double person. So 
Lisa, you yeah. ruined my 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 interest in and in, in my your charisma. I can't believe it. No way you had a stunt double. That was you. You should have seen the. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish, but you know what? That was 1988, so there weren't a whole lot of, you know, now learning karate or hapkido or any of these martial arts is uh, so many women do that now. In 1988, no, that was not like a common practice for actresses to even learn and have it as a skill. You know, back then it was still singing and tap dancing, <laughs> you know, so but now it would be a good idea to have martial arts on your resume. We're putting you in a Freddy Krueger movie. You can sing and dance. Go. <laughs> okay. So I have a question for you. Okay? Yeah. How was it to work with Robert England? Oh, he's such a sweetheart. He, he's just a doll. Um He's very charismatic, super high IQ, and can talk about anything. I mean, seriously, anything. I remember we were in the trailer one day, and I'm getting my makeup done. Now, understand that um, I was naturally blonde, like blonde, blonde hair. Right. And, and, um, but for the role of Alice, they wanted me to put uh, dye my hair red. So we put a rinse on my hair every day. Well, it, I may as well just dyed it because it stained my hair after 10 weeks of filming. It stained my hair. It's okay. It's okay. So every morning I had, he's getting his makeup put on and I'm getting this dye put on and then they have to blow dry it. So I would have like two blow dryers on my head. Anyway, we would, we, he and I would be in the trailer. And I remember one time we were just talking about, you know, he's redecorating his bathroom. We were talking about grout colors for the tile, you know. So, so it's kind of funny to see, you know, Robert England turning into Freddy as they, you know, glue on the pieces. And then uh, we're just talking about grout. <laughs> anyway, very sweet. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was really sweet to all of us young actors. You know, we were all young. These For many of us, this was our first film. And he was just very gentle with us and he, just a lovely giving actor as well. So was that really your big break when you worked with Robert? Yeah, I would say not, I'd done um, a Hardcastle McCormick TV show way back in the day, um, a guest star. I'd done tons of theater. That was my training the stage. And I did a movie called Give Me an F. <laughs> uh, I took a quarter off of school, off of UCLA to go do that. I was a featured extra. Interesting enough, it was about cheerleaders, four different cheerleading teams. And I was part of the cheerleading team called The Demons. Wow. So, perhaps, so perhaps a foreshadow to landing the role of Alice in a Nightmare on Elm Street series. <laughs> so. That is awesome. <laughs> um, um, of your two uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, because you are you are Alice, the lone survivor. Like you survived. Mm -hmm. What's your mm -hmm. favorite film? Well, you know, that's a hard question to answer because it's kind of like you know. Let's say you have two children, and you say, "Well, which one's your favorite?" <laughs> you know. So, um, and of course, I'm thinking, "Well, the first one, of course." No, <laughs> your firstborn. No, I really love both of them because. I mean, they're both so different, first of all. They're just so different. I mean, in four, you have, you know, Alice, you see the character arc and her, you know, from meek and shy to, you know, kick ass chick, you know, and you get to see her evolve into that. And you also have, I mean, Nightmare Four, the music is amazing and we have great chemistry with all the characters. I love the script, you know. And Nightmare Five, I feel, is a really brave film, especially for 1989, because of all of these social issues it was dealing with. It was dealing with bulimia and anorexia. It was dealing with teen pregnancy, abortion, adopt. I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know. So it, it was a just such a different script, but I love playing. Alice and both of them for sure and I think five is getting a lot more recognition now five is getting a lot more appreciation now I think five is a little ahead of its time because it was touching on these subjects that people didn't really want to talk about that were sensitive and now you know 29 years later it's different and there's great effects in five. Oh my gosh the comic book stuff and all that you know so I am glad you love five <laughs> I like the getting the backstory of of Freddie that gave you like a little bit of the insight. Uh, mm -hmm. 
because they never went all the way back. It was just like, oh, this is the guy. He did this terrible thing and he's in the boiler room and blah, blah, blah. But they mm -hmm. went in depth like, okay, he's a little bit more than a terrible guy. <laughs> this guy. Right, right, right. And he didn't have the best beginning with his mother being raped by the mani maniacs. You know yeah, what I mean? Maniac, she was raped. I mean, seriously, that's such a crazy scene. And filming that was nuts. I mean, it was a huge set that was built. And when they lock, and there's, you know, a hundred extras walking around creepy, creepy in their crazy, gross costumes and eat. And I'm in my little nun and I'm in my nun wardrobe. I mean, it was creepy to even film that. And they locked the door and I'm like, I know it's a movie, but and we're filming, but I'm like, oh God, I hope they have the key. <laughs> they locked that door. I remember being a kid and when the door locked and your face and my heart started bracing because <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. oh, God, she's that. And they're all looking at you like they're going oh, to you. Yeah, I, I was the fresh meat. Yeah, yeah. I, I was the fresh meat. Terrifying. Yeah, I actually did see some parts of the movie, and your facial expressions are, like, dead on. I mean, and you know what? We're both in the entertainment business, and, like, even with wrestling, you got to have those mm. expressions at those key moments, and you definitely killed it on, on, on some of those. And, like, you you know, I hope they aren't like your facial expressions in real life when you're dealing with personal issues. Be <laughs> <laughs> afraid because that was scary. So I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you. No, I mean, I really, you know, did my best as an actor to, you know, emulate who I saw as Alice, you know, and how, how she would move and walk and talk and express, you know, and all that. So I love being an actor. It's so fun to create characters. No, it is great because like, you know what? And a lot of people, a lot of things that we talk about, like people ask me about acting and they say wrestling, you know, and I tell them, you got to look at the producer's vision of what they want. You got to look at the cam, the, uh, the character. Then you got to put it into your own perception on how we come out because this way it would become natural. Do you have the same outlook when you prepare for a role? Absolutely. Um, and an additional though, very, very important is backstory. Is your backstory. No. You have to have your backstory. Where did you grow up? Were you, were your parents, you know, did, were they married? Did you go through divorce? Do you have brothers, sisters? Where did you grow up? Uh, what are your happiest memories? What are your saddest memories as that character? So you have to build that background. You want to know how, how I, I was a, in wrestling. I was known as a heel. That means the bad guy. Okay. And I used to have these faces when I was beating up on the good guy. Ask me, how do you get those faces? Because you look like you're killing somebody. Mm -hmm. I would tell them that I would take the worst parts of my childhood and whatever was bad, I would beat that person and look at that person like, like that's the person. Mm -hmm. And it came off for all the years I performed, every place I went, anytime I had to be a tough guy, anytime I had to do something, I wasn't looking at the actor or the position. I was looking at the person who did these horrible things. And that's how come people thought I was really scary because it was too real to believe you could be that angry on, on point. You're like a method actor almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's totally method acting. Yeah. That's method. Yeah. Feel your, your role. Um, they used some old footage of you in the movie, Freddy versus Jason. Were you, yeah. they didn't like bring you back because I really thought that that needed to happen in that movie. And they used this old footage. Did that bother you? You know, that's a really good question because, in fact, yes, it did bother me. In fact, I heard about it that they were doing this Freddy, and then they contacted me to for me to uh, that they were going to use this footage, so they needed like to sign. I designed some something, you know, for them. And then I'm like, but um, why why don't you have me do like a cameo or something, you know, you know? And this is a discussion with my agent, and she <laughs> reached out to them, and they're like. Okay, well, sure. As, if she wants to pay her own airline ticket, they filmed in Canada, by the way. If, they, if, they, if she wants to buy her own airline ticket and put herself up in a hotel, okay, we'll put her in it. Is that the most insulting thing in the world? Because that was a huge blockbuster movie that did amazing numbers, and they want you yeah. to put this 
yourself in a hotel. And you're and the thing is, is that the laughing part of that is as basically the lone survivor of the Freddy. Why would why would you not be there? You're the lone survivor yeah. of that nightmare I, on you're the I, old that, you're you're talking to the choir here, I tell ya, I know. I'm just it still kind of blows my mind. What? That, Me, man. <laughs> that is the most insulting, and I'm telling you because the, the, <laughs> the most insulting thing you can do to a performer is when they have something that is great and something that came out and something that was so loved by the fan. They tell you the behind the scenes. Yeah, fly yourself in, put yourself up, donate your time. <laughs> Right. Which is absurd. You don't do that. I mean, it was like to really to say that they could have just said, no, Lisa, thank you so much. But no, we already have the script written and we're just going to use these clips. OK, so but, but I guess they just thought, well, we could just say if she wants to bring herself up here. OK, we'll do it. But uh, yeah, it, it, that was like, I'm, look, I'm over it. I'm totally over it. I mean, you have to get over things like that because all kinds of crazy stuff happens in this in this business. But uh, but yeah, that's the story. <laughs> People that, you know. Out you got to see them at conventions. At conventions, I mean, do you let your nails grow and sharpen them up into points, and then do the cat, <laughs> the cat scratch? That you do? I would. Uh, yeah, not worth the energy. Not yeah. worth the energy. Um, and yeah, go yeah, for yeah, another round. <laughs> 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 right, right. <laughs> Don't feel badly. So every once in a while, we're sitting here watching wrestling on a Monday night, and Vito pops up on the screen, and they don't even ask his permission. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on TV for four weeks last year, and he didn't get a dime. They didn't yeah. ask. Oh, bad, 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 bad. I get, I do get some residuals so from Freddie versus Jason, whatever piece of paper I signed. Uh, but, but it's nothing like if they actually had me in the freaking movie, you know. It's probably anyway. better, like like to act with Robert again, and it also brings in that you know that Jason that Friday the Thirteenth element, which creates pretty much like the ultimate in slasher horror movies. And you are the lone survivor of Nightmare on Elm Street. I yeah, that made uh, a lack in the film to use. Yeah, the I think it would have been an improvement too. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you. That's great. If I you guess. ever think <laughs> right, and they had to do something with Nightmare on Elm Street. They could always do something with a new cast, and here you are sitting in this house in a rocking chair with white hair, and they make you this. And here you are just rocking, and you're inviting people to your home, and then it kind of reenacts what happened at a nightmare on Elm Street inside your house. Like you're telling, like she's telling the tale. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. I you like know, it. Like, you know, like they did in Titanic when the lady told the story. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly what I'm Yes. I love it. That's a great idea. That is a good idea. I don't it want is. 10%. I only want three. What do you want? Then I want to like a script thing in here too. He's going to be like Vito. And I don't want to fly <laughs> on airlines. I definitely want to fly an American. So. <laughs> <laughs> the South. I'm going to go with the South. Okay. No. <laughs> Are you, were you always a horror movie fan? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I, my first thrilling, as a kid in grade school, okay, you know how you could, you used to be able to buy, you know, books, like extra books, fun reading books and stuff. Oh, yeah. And, uh, or I, but I loved the library. And I was fascinated with ghosts and poltergeist, even in third grade, fourth grade. I'm running out books. I'm, I'm checking out books about, you know, ghost stories and this kind of thing. Uh, the first novel I ever read was Dracula by Bram Stoker, the original Dracula. I think I was 10 years old when I read that. And I read it literally. I, so I'm from Missouri, right? And cold winter night. And we have electric blankets. So I read that novel under the covers with my electric blanket light. Okay. <laughs> I tried to keep it hidden, you know, for my family that I was all into this broke stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. And then later on. This is your, you got some good answers here. Some <laughs> so, and I love Nightmare on Elm Street before. Good. Yeah, and I love Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, the first one, the second one, third. I love the third one, you know. So I was quite jazzed, yeah, to have an opportunity to finally audition for Nightmare 4. But that took some undertaking for me to even get the audition. So and anyway. That horror was huge. The slasher horror was a huge, 
huge deal. Like I remember growing up, that was like, oh, Freddy Krueger movies on. Everybody was at the TV. That was yeah. like, Freddy was the man. Freddy was the man. I liked yeah. him better than Jason because Freddy had a personality. Even yeah. though it was horrible, he had this like personality you could laugh at as opposed to Jason that just came and slashed you up and that was that. Freddy right. the joke, then he slashed you up. And I like yeah. Like and Freddy, you don't see a lot of blood in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. No. You don't see a lot of blood. You know, you've got these, it's very clever. You've got, you know, Debbie, who turns into a cockroach, right? right. We have, then we have Sheila, who dies of an asthma attack, you know. Then we have, you know, you don't, even when um, Ken Sagos' character, the beginning of four, in the the big, the, the cars, that huge scene, the world of cars, right. and cars go crazy and stuff. And then Freddie does stab him in the stomach. But do you see blood squirting around? No, yeah. I don't see any blood. So all of his, the Freddy, the Freddy Nightmare movies are just clever and his wit. Uh, and it just draws you in because it's like, he's like a real person in a way, you know. A cerebral killer. He's very smart. He's a cerebral killer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He, has he attacks your fears. He attacks your fears. Yeah, he's he's more mental. And then at the end, he's physical. So that's yeah. what a good, well-rounded um, villain, I think. You know, we have a question in the chat. You want to go ahead and read that from the Reverend? When is this Scream Queen documentary coming out uh, of, uh, and is she in it? Yeah, are you in the Scream Queen documentary? Oh, I'm... I well, I haven't done it yet. I I know I'm being introduced into the Scream Queen Hall of Fame. Wow! Okay. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. So um, so but but I don't I ha I don't know about the documentary. I haven't done it yet. I don't know. I don't know. We gotta look into that. We gotta right. get you ready. I guess so. <laughs> another question. Now that you mentioned all this about. Freddy Krueger and Jason, right? And being that you were the, you know, the hot mama on set, and you were scared of <laughs> scared to hell. If you were given a choice, who would you marry, Freddy or Jason? Oh, oh, <laughs> maybe Jason because he doesn't talk. There you go. Okay. So <laughs> I would too. He's quiet. He doesn't yell much. He, he treats would, her well. Like exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I would run the house. I would rule, right? Yeah, I mean. Like campground in a lake. He wears a mask. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, like you gotta think about these questions, you know. <laughs> well, at least I have an answer to your question. They say it's listed on Wikipedia that it'll come out in 2019. But they did not give it day. So just for your records and your age. Okay. Okay. I will check it out. I, well, I, I, there are people tweeting you. We got a lot of them. <laughs> okay. I love it. Tweeting over there for you. Uh, let me break. <laughs> you know, I shut that down. No, I okay. apologize to you. I think we're coming to okay. your your project now. All right. Here we go. Uh, Here's another good question. Tell us a little bit about your upcoming role in the church. Ooh. Well, uh, I'm very excited because it is being released uh, uh, in theaters tomorrow, Friday, October 5th. You can go to uh, lemley.com and, and you put in your zip code and it tell you what, what, where it's playing. But it is all over the country. It's a limited release right now. Um, but I, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not a good girl. <laughs> so... Oh. Oh. Yeah, so the church is get the church terrorizes me, terrorizes me. So this role, I'm pretty much running around scared half the time, which is a completely different kind of role than like Alice in Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Yeah, Alice. Um, yeah, <laughs> Alice didn't. Yeah, Alice kind of confronted, and this this role that I play of Joan Laurels, um, yeah, she's just like, what the hell is going on? And I'm scared, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know that kind of thing. So. Um, but it's a really fun film. It's a PG-13, actually. Um, and it's really, it's a thriller. And it was great to work with Bill Mosley. So awesome. awesome. And, uh, yeah, he and I are going to be at the Lemley in North Hollywood um, tomorrow night. So Very cool. And you guys are doing a meet and greet as well, aren't you? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yep. 
Let me ask the next question from the chat. We have our own brand member, Virtue, is in the chat. He wants to know, Lisa, what are your thoughts on um, Rob Zombie films? Um, he thinks he gets undeserved criticism. And what's the likelihood on uh, you actually working on one of Rob's films? Oh, wow. Um, I, I think he's criticized too much as well. I do. I think he's quite brilliant. And the opportunity of working on one is fascinating because it's such it's the co completely different series, you know, of films. You know, I'm Nightmare on Elm Street, and that Rob Zombie is a whole different deal. So I don't know the likelihood, huh? That would be an interesting um, match. That would be a very interesting match. So maybe do you have Rob Zombie's um, email, and I can email him? We can find it. <laughs> Bill's Bill. in all his movies. Bill. <laughs> Those movies. <laughs> I, love to build I can reach out to Daniel Harris. Daniel Harris, I'm sure probably has it. I don't know. Just be like, hey, yeah. hey, if you get it? Can you send it to me? I just wanted to hang out with Rob Zombie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The next question. So the next question here is from Big Josh, and he's another one of the brand members. And he asks, What was the most challenging scene that you have done in Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, probably the, ch in the church, there was just a lot of, you know, stunts going on. And, um, there's a scene where Freddie and I are up on this elevated platform and we're kind of jockeying each other. Okay. On this platform. Right. So you have to realize, you know, we're, we're eye to eye. So, and the platform is only so big. So they have like, they have stunt guys around the platform. Because if you fall off, <laughs> you want to make sure you get caught, you know, <laughs> doing it. So that that was challenging physically. Um, and so I, I'd say probably the, the church stuff was most challenging. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys doing the fighting on the scaffolding part, like the boiler room type scene deal. Yeah. That was, that was so pretty. That looked like it was, I thought it was a stunt person, but you were actually up there doing it too. That's scary. I'm going to show you these movies. It's a little, it is, you know, I mean, you're up a few feet. It doesn't seem like it's high, but you're, I mean, you, you're dealing with physical live scenarios, you know, and you just want to make sure you're not going to fall off and, you know, crack your head open kind of thing, you know. Somebody else did in the movie? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're not no, no, talk no, about no, it. no, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. now here's, here's something that is, is pretty good to think about. When you think about doing the church, right, and you're coming together with a bunch of new cast and people you haven't met, what is your mindset going into a new project? Um, it really is about just being yourself and personable and introduce yourself to to everybody, you know, and what's your name? And, and just it's about creating a... a temporary family in a way, you know, cause you want to be, you want to be liked, you want to like everyone. And we're all there together with, with the same intention of making this film as great as we can, you know, and about being polite and, you know, some actors don't want to rehearse lines, you know? So it's just like, Hey, do you want to rehearse lines or not? It's fine with me, whatever. And, you know, usually say, Oh yeah, let's do that. You know? Um, but it's just about, you know, going to a party where you don't know anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And you have, you have, you smile and you're friendly and open and, um, and also just grateful to be there, you know? Now, I think like when you get into a, a situation like that, I mean, you've been in the movie business a very long time and it's same thing with the entertainment business, wrestling. And a lot of times mm -hmm. you find that people don't check their egos at the door and they bring their resume. <laughs> to the job. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I really have to say there's only one experience I had on um, Murder, She Wrote, an episode I did of Murder, She Wrote. And so we're doing, it's a group scene and we're doing like the blocking rehearsal. And so I've kind of picked the position of how I want to stand, how I want to hold my arms. I think it was, I was crossing them or half crossing them or something. And this actress in the scene, she's like, um, I already have that position. You're going to have to change your way you're doing with your arms. 
I, I was like, wow. Wow. Okay, Miss Bitch. You know what I mean? Oh. And, and I mean, I was really, that is the only time in all the projects I've done, even theater, where I find that um, actors in general have been just really cool and sweet and nice. And again, have the right intention. Let's make this as good as we can, you know? So, so I would have done, I would have went first, did it, and then let her change the thing. <laughs> the finger and said, "Is this position okay for you?" That's yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. This I know, and, and quite frankly, quite <laughs> frankly, it's the director who's going to say, "Hey, both of you, you know, hey, so can you do this? You know, can you just put your elbow on your hip instead of that or whatever?" It's up to the director to look at the visual that he's seen, how the scene is blocked, how people are standing or sitting or whatever, you know, what we're doing, and it's up to the director to. Talk to the actor, not the actor to the actor. Yeah, was, not cool. Uh, was Vito super polite and friendly on the set? He's usually very friendly on the set. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> the the way team. to be. Enormous. No ego. No ego. Wow. No, everyone. Everyone there is as important as the other person. Everyone there. It's a. It's an ensemble. I always look at it that way. The one thing that I like most about doing films, and I don't know about you because, like, you know, but this is something that's good practice. When I go and I meet my coworkers, I like to pick their brain, ask them questions, look at their mannerisms and how they carry themselves and how they perform. You find that you do the same thing when you go to films and have you done this in your career? You mean while actually watching a film? Well, watching the actors interact. Now, I would say, um, who's the most famous actor you were on set with? I'm not making you choose the best. I'm saying, who's the most famous? Uh, Mark Hamill. Oh, what? and George Clooney. Okay, George Clooney. Let, okay, let's take George Clooney. Now, were you shy? Did you ask him questions? Did you watch him prepare? Did you watch him work to gain some... Um, knowledge on how you could be better in the film. Oh, always, always, always. I mean, I that's why I love people watching in general, how people walk and move their head or their arms or how do they swing their arms when they walk or run or, you know, are they a little pigeon-toed? Are they more duck-toed? Are they, you know, because it's just, it's just gathering a library of, you know, traits, you know, to store away, you know, to use for a character, you know? Um, like George Clooney, he's oh my gosh, sweetest thing in the world. Super, super sweet. No ego whatsoever. Um, just so down to earth and just adorable, adorable. And then when we have breaks and stuff, we would chat and stuff like that. Um, now Mark Hamill, I was so nervous. I was so nervous because I love the Star Wars movies and oh my god, I was like Luke Skywalker. Oh my god, I was I couldn't sleep the night before before the first day of filming. I mean, oh my gosh. It's like, are you kidding me? This is a little Star Skywalker. Anyway, I was so nervous. And at the first day of filming, I had a ton of scenes and lines and stuff like that. And it, I really had to like take deep breaths and like calm myself down, you know? And then um, in the first day of filming, for me, it's always like going to the first day of school, you know, and it's hard to sleep and I have two alarms on, make sure the alarms go off, you know, wake up in time and, and all of that. Um, Cause it's so exciting, you know, I get to be on set and oh my God, I'm gonna meet these actors and it's so cool. But at the end of the day, Mark Hamill, at the end of the day, seriously, he's like, again, so down to earth, so cool, so sweet. And we used to watch, he loves the Simpsons, so he had this huge collection of The Simpsons. So he would bring them to set, and we would sit in the trailer and watch Simpsons episodes together. Awesome. Yeah. And then at the end of filming, my kids were huge into Star Wars. And um, Mark had me, my husband, and my kids over to his house and his wife. We swam in the pool. We hung out on the patio. And, I mean, it was awesome. One little fun story there. Um, so Mark and his wife had three children. I had two boys. They were like mm, three and seven years old at the time. And there was a bowl of cherries on the patio table, you know, on the table that we were sitting and chatting at and stuff. And well, my three-year-old turns out he really likes cherries. And I look over and about a third of the bowl is gone. Maybe half of this big bowl of cherries is gone. 
and my youngest proceeds to vomit <laughs> all over the patio. And Mark was so, and his wife were so cool. They were just like, they're like, ah, oh, no big deal. And Mark, there's a hose there, and Mark just gets the hose and hoses it off the patio. Because he's a dad. Cause dad <laughs> yeah, because he's a dad. He's like, ah, whatever, you know. So anyway, again, you know, I've had just wonderful, there's just wonderful, sweet, kind, down-to-earth actors out there that I've had a pleasure to work with for sure. Mark Hamill is such an amazing, vast actor. I love when he does voiceover work because I love his work yes. on Batman Animated. Mm -hmm. he, he really portrays what you would think while reading a comic book, the Joker would sound like. Mm -hmm. No, he's just great. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Amazing work. So whether it be you know acting in front of the camera or voiceover work like behind the camera, anything he does just comes out amazing. Yeah, he loves voiceover work. He just yeah, he loves voiceover work. In fact, this movie that we did together was called Watchers. There were four Watchers. We did the fourth Watchers, um, and it was also called Watchers Reborn, which is based on a Dean Koontz book called Watchers. And interesting enough, I actually read the book watchers when i was filming nightmare on elm street 4 and then you know seven years later <laughs> i'm doing watchers 4 with mark hamill anyway it was pretty awesome so and because nightmare 4 is the closest related to, or sorry watchers 4 is closest related to the original book that dean Koontz wrote um where was i going with that oh well the thing is your comic books yes this is when at the time he created something called black pearl which is um a comic book series that he created and um and he i still have the five comic book series and stuff so anyway yeah he loves comics not very cool stuff very cool i stuff. have to settle a debate i'm having a debate with a friend that i hope he's watching right now <laughs> i know i'm right were you on an episode of boy meets world yes i am the winner <laughs> the i might have done even a couple a couple i think you were said, one episode but he was, like, was wow. maybe one and i was the the cute teacher's girlfriend oh yeah the cute teacher yeah. The cute. and they also brought me back and i did voiceover work for them like the tv announcer on the tv or something i did voiceover work for them too yeah so you won <laughs> I won. hey i won give me five on <laughs> I have another question in the chat they said did you ever think that they would still be talking about about this movie Nightmare years on later. Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, no. <laughs> no, no. None of us had any idea, you know? Because back then, too, you didn't have social media like you do now. You know, you had your VHS, VHS tapes and stuff, but, um, and there weren't the conventions that are now where we can meet the fans. That wasn't around in the 80s. So, you know, we did our the best we could with our role, and, and then, that was it. And, but of course, I knew it was significant to be part of the series because I knew Nightmare One, I mean, two, three, Nightmare Three was huge, you know. Um, but yeah, 30 years later, no, didn't think, <laughs> didn't have any idea. Yeah, that's amazing. Right. You can get out to see fans now so much more because with like the oh, yeah. conventions and the Comic Cons and. Mm -hmm. Can really get out and meet people, and it definitely keeps the legend uh, alive for that film. Yeah, song. it does. Do you think that with the advancement of social media, do you think that it has hurt the the industry, or has it bettered the industry? <sighs> I think it's been a great uh, way to promote what is happening in your life professionally, and. To have people supporting you and and to get the word out and get the buzz going i mean you don't just have tv anymore you know you have your twitter and your instagram and your facebook and all that kind of thing i think how it's hurt the industry is that um a lot of the um well, what do you call it like the the real t real shows the like bachelorette and you know uh non-scripted shows okay that are what's that reality tv yeah the reality shows kind of thing um because now casting directors let's say i'm going to audition for a film or even a commercial they will ask what my instagram account is because they want to see how many followers you have they're going to check you out and if you have more followers on facebook 
The person with more followers will get the role. If a director can't choose between two actresses, they're going to go with the one that has more followers. And I have casting director friends, and this is a fact. And I think that's just really sad. I think that's sad. Because what if you're not? I'm an old time person. I just started doing Facebook like last year, you know? Um, I mean, I've had an account someone set up for me, but I didn't do anything with it. I didn't do anything with Instagram, you know, because it's just not my favorite thing to do. You know, I'd rather go play tennis or take an acting class, you know? <laughs> the same problem with with Vito because he didn't do the social media thing very often uh -huh. he didn't have a Twitter account so last year we started everything up and people are like wow I can't believe that's the number that you had you've been in uh, ever. yes yeah it's because he didn't do any of those things and when they first started people did it they could get 20,000 followers in a day yeah you that anymore do you, want to yeah, know you can't do that anymore exactly so these people early on have like a million followers, but now we yeah, have forget it. You can't get that anymore. And then you got to buy and promote, spend money to promote yourself and blah, blah, blah. And then you can have followers that aren't even really followers. They're just bought followers. You know, I mean, I think it's rather atrocious. We, we do a YouTube channel, um, but mm -hmm. we focus more on our audio podcasting and we do a YouTube channel. And because they're constantly changing the algorithm, we get uh, where we get a thousand people and the next month we get 16. Oh and my gosh. Changes and because people buy viewers and they they cash in on on viewers, the same thing happens with us. Oh. It changes the algorithm for what we're putting out. Is that what it is? The algorithm? See, I can't even figure it out. You know what I mean? It's so confusing to me about how to really do this. I I don't know. Because <laughs> you know what, you're old school like I am. Because like when I broke into business, you know they told me bad guys don't sell pictures. You go to wrestling, you get paid for your wrestling. You're not there to sell merchandise. You're not Sears and Roebuck. You're not there to, you know, do all this stuff. And I believed that for a very long time because that's the way I broke in. And I didn't, mm -hmm. but I had to carry all these, all this stuff, these gimmicks or whatever to make money. How do you make money? You make money by your wrestling. Like when you do a movie, you don't hope that somebody buys your picture or buys a t-shirt or subscribe. Mm -hmm. You get paid to act. Mm -hmm. That's how you make your money. Yeah, the game changed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it, at least it still keeps everything you've done out there where previously it was a VHS cassette. Now no, it's yeah. at least. Yeah. But I don't know how many, how much of the podcasting you do, Lisa, but I've done podcasting over the last year and a half, almost two years. And I'd say I did an interview just. Um, I say less than five days ago, just on less than five days ago, I had 250 downloads, 250,000 downloads because I was talking, I'm wrestling, I'm in a movie. We've been doing a lot of press and it has been getting a lot of recognition. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe like the way that the internet and all the social media has projected this to put the movie and put everybody you know, over like when I uh, when I say you know, when they ask me who's starring in the movie, I say Ben Mosley, um, Peter Wilcox, Tim Howard, you know, and name a few other names. But I'm losing you a little bit. Can you hear us now? Can you hear? I can us? hear you. All right. Okay. So, like, when you're doing stuff, there you go. <laughs> all right. So when I'm doing stuff like that, and you name the names, and it boosts the movie. And it, it, it's a great thing because, like, they, you know that you're getting out there and you, you're doing uh, advertising for the movie and for the group. Mm -hmm. Now, being with that said, like, today's uh, today's podcast, that will go on all our networks. So a lot of people will get to know and at least listen to Lisa Wilcox. They get to hear what you have to say. It's great to be in touch. You know, sometimes people can't get in touch with you. And having this yes. outlet definitely helps like going to conventions and stuff like that yeah i agree i mean i've booked movies through uh -oh. yeah like facebook facebook messenger i mean what? i've gotten I've, got, I've booked movies that way so yeah that is awesome it's another way for the and then i say sure here's my agent information and and you can do it but i i get asked um and legitimate films too you know like you know so it is a nice, it is a nice avenue for for that. People can get in touch with you. All right. So, Lisa, what other projects do you have coming up 
that you would like to share with us? Uh, I have a, yes. Um, I filmed a movie called The Bloody Man in Kentucky this summer. And Tuesday Night is also in it. She reprised the role of Kristen in Nightmare 4, Patricia Arquette's role. We don't have any scenes together, but we're in the same movie. And that was pretty awesome. Can't talk about what it's about or anything yet. And then I have another one that's called The uh, Mansfield Killings, which I'm cast in and also uh, I'm an associate producer on. So we actually uh, we're doing some test shoots and uh, I've been behind the scenes. Very interesting. And we actually did a casting for the two test scenes we're doing. We need three actors. So but it's about actually and I ran the camera during the audition and got to see all these actors come in and audition. It was fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. It's also a lot of work. This producing stuff is a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. But I love it. I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, so, yeah, so those two I can talk about, but I have some other ones, Kecksburg. Um, if you go to my, um, IMDB, Lisa Wilcox, and, or my website, Lisa E. Wilcox, I know that throws people off, because when they look for me, they look for Lisa Wilcox, but my website is Lisa E. Wilcox. Um, anyway, you can see some more stuff going on there, too, so there's just quite a few projects, yeah. And the church is coming out tomorrow. So where can everybody meet you with the meet and greet just so they have the information again? Yeah, it's a North Hollywood Lemley uh, in the theater arts in the district in North Hollywood. The Lemley at uh, 955 p.m. I'll be the show starts, but I'll yeah, meet and greet is probably around 930, I would say. So and Bill Mosley is planning to be there as well. Uh, but it's playing it's playing all over. So. Dallas, I've had friends say, oh, I found it in Dallas and Chicago and Philly and New York and everywhere. So it's pretty cool. Um, and Vito, you are, you are going to be at Disney Springs tomorrow yes. at 7 oh. p.m. at the AM Square. So, yeah, I think everybody, like, where there's people, I know that um, the producer, uh, Dom Frank, and some of the other cast are going to be at the Philadelphia location. You and Bill are at the Hollywood location Vito's at Disney Springs AMC, and we'll be there at 7 p.m., and we have some stuff to give away. We're having a, a big party meet and greet there. And oh, fun. Oh, Excellent. So oh, gosh. Well, I'm excited. We'll see. We'll see. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm excited, too, for you guys. I think it's going to be a, a good time, a good uh, a good showing tomorrow. Guys, if you want to get tickets, um, you can go right now. They're available on Fandango. So go to Fandango.com. Look up the church with your zip code. You'll be able to buy tickets. I know that in here in Orlando, there's a 2 p.m. showing, but Vito and I will be at the 8 p.m. showing. Great. Um, doing the meet and greet at 7, and I'll be giving away T-shirts and posters. And Neat. You have, you have merch. You have the church merch. That church merch. Church merch. Oh my gosh, I don't have any church merch. Darn. Anyway, he's going to get me some, but oh darn. If I had it, I would give it away too. Well, Lisa fell off a truck. That's how it yeah. happened. <laughs> well, my church poster just came literally like an hour ago from FedEx. Oh, we just got to, yeah, we just got those today too, the, the church. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. We Beautiful got, poster. We got some handbills and some t shirts and some. We got. Yeah, he's. He's sending me some caps because I'll wear the cap. I like to wear baseball caps. Oh, wait, you're getting caps? Oh, I want a cap. Oh, <laughs> I got to have, I wonder if he has trucker caps. Like, I like, right, right. I'm a trucker hat chick. Hey, uh, hey, Lisa, <laughs> are you on the, are you on the chat on Facebook? Like the church chat? Uh-uh. Oh, you missed I don't even know what that, how to do that or what it is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so lame. Hello? Oh, no, I lost you guys. I lost you. Uh oh, what's happened? You. Ah, <laughs> the seat, the, the Are you screen just froze and I couldn't hear anything. Okay, you're, you're back. Oh, we're back. Okay. okay. It's been doing that. People hang out. It's a pain. Go ahead, Vito. You go ahead. Now, you missed some good stuff because there are some, like, there are some uh, people in the film who I kind of terrorize. And I, you know, I. <laughs> so. You know, you know, like the, all the, all the comments say, "Hey, you're gonna be a big star, big star, twinkle, twinkle, baby, twinkle, twinkle." <laughs> Stop! Oh my gosh! Oh shoot! Wait, it froze again. It froze. It froze. It froze. It's froze. It's froze. It's good. Nothing yet. Ah! It's frozen again. 
Frozen. Oh, heck. No! Oh, no. <laughs> ah! Hello? Lisa on the phone because she doesn't know she's frozen. So I'm going to eject Lisa. Now, call Vito's going to call on the phone. I want to thank Lisa, even though I had to eject her. <laughs> thank you for joining us, guys. We're going to be at Disney Springs tomorrow. Big Vito's going to be signing autographs. I'm going to be giving out um, shirts and posters and other memorabilia and things from the movies. So if you are in the Disney Springs area tomorrow night, 7 p.m., showing of the churches at 8, we will be there. It is free to um, come and uh, join the fun for the pre-show. But please buy a ticket. Go to Fandango.com. You'll be able to purchase tickets there with your zip code. This is a two-week limited um, engagement for the first two weeks. Then it's going to expand to other theaters. So be patient if it's not in your area. It will be soon. So thank you guys for joining us tonight. I'd like to again thank Lisa Wilcox. Vito ran away. Um, but I'd like to thank him too. And hopefully we see you guys out tomorrow for the big showing of the church AMC theaters. Bye-bye. This presentation has been brought to you by the Big Vito brand. You can check us out at BigVito.com and HarlowInc.com.